It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't know how many of you have read Shakespeare. But Shakespeare wrote uh, about Julius Caesar. And after the assassination of uh, Julius Caesar, Mark Antony came out and he said to the multitude, he said, I've come here not to bury Caesar, but to praise him. And the multitude, they just went wild. So I'm saying here today, I came here not to bury Jesus, but to praise him. So can we have a shout? message for you. Yes, Lord. I'm going to take you through some pastures. I want to demonstrate to you the love of God. The love of the Father. What a Father is like. Jesus himself he said if you see me you see the Father. And this Jesus described himself in many places. He's the Almighty God. He talks of himself as the light of the world, as the door, as the true vine. He talks of himself as the resurrection of the life. He called himself the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. Now, how many of you? If you were a sheep, would love to have the Lord as your shepherd. Let me see. Let me. Hey, there's nobody else. Not a sheep. And funny enough, Jesus does describe us as sheep. But before, uh, before I get into the message, I want to sing you a little song. I mean, I know everybody's looking forward to seeing Praise Brother Anthony sing a song. God's gonna, God is going to make a sing out of me. I'm going to hey, keep pressing hey, it. Hey, 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 hey. Sister Norma, can you uh, go over to 276? We're going to try something here. All right. And, um, and I want some, some help. Uh, Sister Smith, will you come and help me? We're going we're gonna to do something really special for you today. Praise, Praise, Praise the Lord. say a little prayer in between and then everybody can just you know jump in afterwards. The song is called Where He Leads Me. Where He Leads Me I Will Follow that Jesus would want to describe himself as one. And again, uh, about the sheep, that he would want to call Christians by that name. And as part of the mix, I want to introduce to you the enemy of the sheep. And that's a fly. See, wherever there is infestation, the flies would gather, and if the conditions are good, they would multiply. Now this particular fly, what he would do is he would lay his eggs in the nostrils of the sheep. And when the larva hatches, they would work their way up the nostrils of the sheep and into some part of the membrane in the brain of the sheep. And the pain that this lava causes in their quest for nourishment 
would cause all this pain in the head of the sheep and they would bang their heads against the rocks to try to alleviate the pain. And sometimes they would do it even unto death. And this is where the shepherd comes in. He has to, he has to know the sheep, he has to know which one has a problem. He has to know which one has injured himself and he's there. As a, as a doctor and he has to anoint their head with this oil to try and ease the pain. In John chapter 10, Jesus addresses the responsibility of the shepherd and the role that he plays in the life of the sheep. He also talks about the tactics of the intruder and the way the sheep would respond to them. Now we're going to take an in-depth look at the life of the shepherd and the sheep. The Lord. So everybody stand, I'll just say a little prayer so we can set the foundation for this message. Praise God. I know my sister, it's okay because I understand, uh, Sister Joy, you know, but I know your heart is there, so that is okay. Father, in Jesus' name. We, we come before your throne, Father, to seek mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We, we continue to acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He's our shepherd, and we look to him for guidance. We look to him for protection, for peace, and for joy through the Holy Spirit. Lord, we're asking you to open our hearts to receive your word as we talk about the Good Shepherd. Jehovah Rubi. Yes. This we pray. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Now, this is going to be pretty exciting. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, it's a fairly simple message to digest because we all know what a shepherd is like. And we know what a sheep is like. We're pretty dumb, but uh, that's okay. Now, throughout the early centuries, farming and the raising of livestock was commonplace. Technology had not reached the standard that which it is today and uh, spirituality was at the top of the charts. Animal sacrifice was the thing of the day. Now this alone will tell you how important the animals were. There were cattle, sheep, goat and believe it or not there was even bird sacrifice. If someone didn't have an animal to sacrifice because of poverty, they could catch a sparrow and offer that as their sacrifice for sin. Now the word sheep or lamb was often used as a metaphor to describe not only the Christians, but Jesus himself. In John 1 29, John the Baptist, he saw Jesus coming to him at the river Jordan and he said to all those who were present, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. In the book of Revelation, he's also described as the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He is the Lamb in the midst of the throne, and he is worthy. He is the Lamb worthy to be praised. But the question is, what's a sheep without a shepherd? And strangely enough, the metaphor doesn't stop there. The Lord is not only described as a lamb, but also as a shepherd. So does this mean that he takes care of himself? No, it doesn't mean that. What it means is that he is everything. Amen. He, is, he is the one who offered the sacrifice, because he's a high priest, and he is the sacrifice. Glory to God. In John 10, 17, Jesus said, Therefore doth the Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it up again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to take it up, to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This is what the Father told him. He's also the one who was both God and man. Colossians 2 9 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In 1 Timothy 3 16 it says, And without controversy, 
Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed one in the world, and received up in glory. He is the one who was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Hebrews 5.10. Yes, Melchizedek, uh, as we have learned, means king of righteousness. And Melchizedek was a Canaanite, a non-Israelite, a Gentile, if I may say so. And Jesus being a Jew, and under the order of the priesthood of Melchizedek, he could preach and minister both to the Jews and to the Gentiles. He had then the authority to minister to the whole world. Yes. Because of that order. God arranged all of this. Yes. Praise the Lord. But as a shepherd, this is what the psalmist said. And I'll explain later what it all means. We're going to read the 23rd Psalm. And if you want, you can read along with me so we really get it uh, into our system. Uh, Sister Norma, if you want, uh, you can, you can, you can uh, play the piano if you want. I'm going to do the 23rd Psalm here. You can play anything. Just to get, a, just to get the, the, the soul, the suko, uh, entice a little bit so we can... Uh, get some of this meal that we're going to deliver here. Uh, nice, uh, the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Go! I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup brought it over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. first thing that the psalmist makes plain is that he's going to be okay because the Lord is, is a shepherd. Amen. There's something that the psalmist does much like the sheep. Sometimes he would walk through the valley of the shadow of death like the sheep which would become lost or sometimes would be in danger of death by the wild animals. Yet it doesn't seem to be afraid like the little children. Sometimes they would be led through dangerous territory in order to get to green pastures. They're going through those places. But they're not going to be afraid. You see, the psalmist says that he will fear no evil. Because he knows that the shepherd is nearby. And he will find him if he is lost. And he will protect him if he is challenged by the enemies. That's a good, good shepherd. And so it is with the Holy Spirit. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He will be with us and even in us. He will always be our comforter and our guide. Jesus said in Luke 15, 1, referring to the lost sheep. What one of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that one which was lost until he finds it. And when he had found it, he puts it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he come at home, he called together his friends and neighbors saying, Say, rejoice with me, I have found my sheep which was lost. Do you see the love and the protection and the joy that is wrapped up in a partnership of love? Which one of you here today if you have discovered that your child had not come home from school, would not leave everything that you're doing in the house and run out there and searching and searching, calling the police, calling everyone 
and would not rest until you have found your yes, child. Amen. Amen. So it is. So it is. So it is sir. With the shepherd. Even more so. He's a good Hallelujah. shepherd. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank Another thing that he does, and it comes in the form of a commitment, and he does it because of the goodness, the love, the mercy, and the protection of the shepherd. He loves the shepherd. Because the shepherd first loved him. First John 4, 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. Thank you, Jesus. We love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus loves us, my friend. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see? And the life now which we live in the faith. We live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Our life is not our own. We were bought. Jesus died for us. So this life doesn't belong to us anymore. Glory to God. You see? The psalmist makes a vow that he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Not just in the church house, but in the house that the Lord has prepared for him. The Christian has the hope and promise that someday soon he will be in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Yes. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there shall you be also. Oh, glory to God. Yes, Lord. And that's a promise. And we wait expectantly with our eyes tuned to the sound of his voice. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. And with the trump of God, the Lord himself will come in the clouds. And he's going to call us up. We who are alive will be changed in an instant and we're going to go up to meet him. But the dead in Christ will rise first. And we're all going to be with the Lord. We'll have a great time. Oh, bless the Lord. We'll miss a lot of tragedies. Praise the Lord. You see, the Christian that is protected by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, like the sheep that is protected by the shepherd, knows his voice and you will always follow him but I have breaking news you know when you're watching the television every once in a while they got this flash breaking news and when we see that flash we jump because we don't know what the breaking news is is it another 9-11 we, when we see the word breaking news we jump we pay attention because yes. it could be something to do with us. Yes. You see? And we are warned to be on the alert with this breaking news. There is an intruder. A thief who has come to rob, steal, and destroy as many Christians as he can. Now I read the report this morning and this is what it said. And it's a very serious warning. <coughs> and it must not be taken lightly. Allow me to quote his very words. According to Johannine report, the report goes like this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now listen to the report. It's not an old story. It's uh, going on. It's a present story. Because this thief is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking whom he might destroy. So you need to take this seriously. And the report goes on that, but he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So you want to know which one is the intruder. That's right. To him the porter opened and the sheep hear his voice and he called his own sheep by name and leaded them out. Got to watch this. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him and they know his voice. Yes. Uh, watch for that. Yes, sir. Know your master. And a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. And this is for the young children. When you hear someone calling you, you don't have to go because you know your mother's voice. You know your father's voice. So you don't have to follow the voice of a stranger. He is like the intruder. And then Jesus said again, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. 
Jesus is the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear him. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, he shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yes. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, who's own the sheep or not, right. he seeth the wolf coming. And he leaveth the sheep and he fled. Yes. And the wolf catches them and scatter the sheep. Yes, sir. And the hireling, he fled. Because he's a hireling and he cared not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. Yes, sir. And I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. How the sheep I don't have. And the sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one, one shepherd. shepherd. Yes. There's going to be one, one, shepherd. one shepherd. Therefore, that my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Yes. Have you heard the breaking news? This is the breaking news that exists today, and it's going to go on and on until Jesus comes again. Amen. The thief is going to try to dissuade us, move us away from our faith. He wants us to renounce Jesus. You see it all the time, Columbine High School murder. One of the, the students with the gun confronted one girl who was a Christian and he said with the gun at her head, renounce your faith or I'll shoot you.